side the hood is off. It's our first big step there. And uh, just a little trick to get the hood line back up. If you run some self-tapping screws through the bracket and into the hood, all you gotta do is shoot those two self-tapping screws back in when you put the hood back on. You can bolt it right back up where it was. Now, if it was off before, it's not gonna help you much, but we'll get you closer. So uh, we're probably gonna end up pressure washing all this, getting it a little bit cleaner before we start taking it all the way down. So that's the first step. All right, guys, we got it all pressure washed. Got most of the gunk off of everything and started tearing it apart now. All right, guys, uh, I know a lot of y'all been worried about Daddy and uh, he's feeling a lot better now. He's been out here getting pretty busy in the shop. I have. So, been. the last few days. So, check out what all we got working on. So, here's where we're at. You can tell that he's got a pretty good bit done. Been working on it last, I don't know, four or five days. Yeah, or, five you know, days. It's, uh, I guess it was four days. It's uh, got a pretty good bit done. So, We've got uh, a few different clips. We're gonna roll out pictures and some little clips that he was taking uh, during doing this and uh, just kind of get us up to speed. So first thing uh, we saw was taking off, you know, getting everything cleaned up, pulling the front end off, getting all the wires and all that loose and everything. So we got all that and uh, started unhooking stuff. And then the next part, I guess you just started unbolting the whole front end as one piece, right? right? You see it over here. I pulled the whole yeah. front end off this thing. I used this uh, uh, this engine horse right here, and you use straps and just lift it off and set the front end off. Yeah, you can see where it's where it's uh, bolted up. And then uh, once you got that off, what did you have to do to pull the engine out? I had to pull the uh, the drive shaft out and get it out of the way. Take the cross member loose from the transmission and then start unbolting the, the uh, engine mounts and pull all that part and then just put it all out here by myself. <laughs> Whack the exhaust yeah. off? Yeah, that's all I could do. I tried my best to get the bolts off and I couldn't do it. So I just said, nope, this yes. is wasting too much time. So I just used the- Well, and we're switching off. those out to- Yeah, and it's changed. To anyway. the Mustang shorties anyways, so. That's what everybody does anyway. It's the way stuff, to right? go. Yeah. But, well, you didn't have to do it by yourself. Shouldn't have got Corona. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I was hoping to do some of this with you. Yeah, I know. I was hoping you could too. All right. Uh, before you cut this out, you need to put these braces on the front right here because the frame can either split apart or twist on you. So I put one that down near the front and up on top to keep it from twisting. And that's before you cut the... Uh, the cross member out because once you cut that out there's no strength in here at all so once you got the engine pulled what was the and next step the, the hard part then you'd think all that other was the hard part that's not the hard that's part. the easy part cutting that original cross member out of this thing if you watch the other videos they all tell you that is the worst part and sure enough you go through grinding wheels and you get nasty yeah so that old front end is all just welded on here and riveted and everything else. It's not made yes. to come off ever. No, they don't want it to come yeah. off. So all that's got to be cut out. And, and that, did you use the a lot of more, more wheels or did you I use the, the torch? The torch first, just a rough cut that thing out of there and get it out of yeah, the way. Get the most of it out of the way. And then I come back with the, the my uh, grinders and just cut it out. Then with the grinder, made it a lot better. And then I took the, the big grinder and kind of smooth things up. Yeah, it looks I mean, pretty clean. I mean, pretty straight lines. I tried lines. my best to keep it as straight as I could. So, and then... And then, and, this thing has two two braces here. This comes over and comes down. And this one ends up being right in the way right here. So all I did was just cut it off and clean it out of the way, which was a job. Both sides? Both sides, trying to get that out. And this I left in. This is where the original uh, steering sector bolts on. And I figured that would keep it stronger yeah, if I left it there. Sorry, so, I, so I just had to clean it back. To, to get, so from that, the next thing to do is, well, I put the front end under it just to see what I was going to interfere. And that's when I had to do a little more trimming. And then you got to take it back out again. 
and get your measurements now for these pins to line up. And before I took the original front end out, I made sure I marked my center line right here from center of the wheel to center of the wheel. So I would have those marks to kind of go by. And then I, I had, I looked at other videos and had some dimensions to go by and they were wrong. It didn't work out with this front end because from this center of this pin to the center of that pin is 31 and a half inches. And his dimensions, he told you from the edge of this to the center of that would have threw it way over here. So mm. I had to figure out how was I gonna get that 31 and a half inches to work out perfectly on this frame. So it just took a little bit of figuring. And then they gave you a dimension from, from this hole to here. And I looked at that and that was gonna work out just right from this from the original center line so i just went with that dimension and make sure i kept it nice and straight so then you set the front end here then just to see mm -hmm. where it would be then the fun part of getting up under it and drilling holes with all the oh all the yeah metal shave hot metal shavings drop Dr out. drilling these holes mm -hmm. yeah Falling down on you and then i, oh, I first Drilled it with a uh, different size drill bits and stepped it up. And then finally I used a, uh, a step bit to open it on up to three quarters. Cause this, yeah. thing, this thing measures three quarters. Just to pull it on out of there. So I opened it on up with that. Now what about the trailing arms back here? These are originally on the Crown Vic. They're at an angle. So you have to straighten them out. So what I did was take the front end back out again. Yeah. And uh, yeah, take this thing in and out a bunch of times. And uh, and what I did was just, on the other side, I, I sliced this thing, just the outer metal. The band, the outer band. The, the outer band of it. And and right when you get through it, it went tink like that. You could hear it open up. And I, I left them on the front end. And I just used a hammer and just tapped them around straight and used a level. Just level them out. And leveled them out. And then uh, later on, I'll go back and clamp that back together and weld that up. Yeah, so you can see the line. They have to be uh, right there. Yeah. But they have to be. Uh, you straight. weld the line back up? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then make sure you tack, put your tack from uh, the outer sleeve to the inner sleeve to make sure that they can't separate or twist anymore. Is that everything you've done so far? That's everything I've done so far. So the next thing I have to do is I've got to put the tubes in here, drill the holes for the main bolts to, to go through here and put the tubes in. Cause I bought brand new tubes to go and in here. Where are they at? So you bought brand new tubes from Ford, from the dealership yeah. with bolts and they didn't even know what you were asking for. Uh -uh. So what are the part numbers? Because that's a really good way to do it because a lot of people just make something, which is fine. It's not a big deal, but having a... Uh, Having the actual the original bolts. Crown Vic bolts, there's the bolt numbers there, and it comes with all four. But you get brand new bolts that you know are going to work. <laughs> and everybody mentions that you can. People use the old bolts, but everybody says they're supposed to be used one time, so you're not supposed to reuse them. But this is the original tubes, brand new. Would those originally screw in or weld in? On the they, crown they, weld, they weld in the frame on, on the crown bit. So that's it right there. That, mm -hmm. Let's see, it's threaded on the one end. Yeah, well, I said, well I, the reason I asked, because they've got a hex head mm -hmm. on the end of it. It almost looks like it would like screw down into the frame, but I guess it doesn't. Mm -hmm. it's, it's welded into the original frame too. Yeah. Hmm. Some so people cut them out of the original frame and reuse, we reuse them. We reuse them, but we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. We just bought the front end. It didn't have any of these pieces. So we had to get them from somewhere. Um, so, and then some people just drop the whole body down on top of a, of a Crown Vic, which is nice. So this is the new U-joints and double D steering sector shaft. Oh yeah. This is, these Borgeson? Probably not. These are cheaper. Like, Borgeson. like a Borgeson? Like a Borgeson. But this has the, uh. The, uh, oh, okay. the, the try in on it, which is like a uh, triangle Ford. kind of original Ford to, uh, to a double D. Three, uh, what is it? Uh, three quarter double D. That's it, that piece. What are those? And these are uh, 
new um, uh, core support mounts. Oh, okay. Just yeah. go, just change them out while you're down there. Yeah. The old ones are pretty rough. Oh, they were rough. So I went ahead and bought new ones. Yeah. Right. I'm going to have to buy some for the cab too. Go ahead and put my cab mounts. So, so you did have some of the original bolts. Oh yeah, they're just really the bad. And they say to use these to mock up everything. Use your old bolts, tighten up everything, and make sure you mock up everything right. But then, when you finally get down to lock tighten everything in place, use the new bolts and lock, the, lock tight everything. Well, you don't want your front end coming loose, so it's probably a good idea. Go ahead and use all new bolts. So that pretty much gets us caught up to where you're at now. So what's the the next step then? So after you do the sleeves in there weld them in and the next thing i'll do is uh box this in right here i'll put it just come box it in and probably turn it turn it in and weld everything in real nice so it'll put the strength back in the uh the frame again yeah and i'll probably use the same thickness if i can about an eighth of an inch piece of metal weld it all back in there yes okay that's it Appreciate you guys watching. Dave's done a good job. So uh, stay tuned. We'll have more coming.